There you go. You're good to go. Hello and welcome to our Genomi Club brought to you by Genomi Australia. I am sitting at our amazing new Continental M17 machine. Um, it is a gorgeous machine to sew on. I have been playing with it all day uh, yesterday and it is just a dream to sew on. Um, I don't know, there's too many features to tell you about, but please, if you are interested in information about the new Continental M17, you can contact your closest Genomi store and they can give you um, a flyer, information, pricing, um, arrival dates, all of that information on the new Continental M17. And I just wanted to show you here, it is a sewing and embroidery machine and it comes with our new industry largest hoop, this is 46 centimetres by 28 centimetres. So it's a massive hoop for those that like to do the embroidery. And it is also a wonderful sewing machine. Oh, sorry, it's having a bit of noise coming in. Okay, you have to unmute me. Am I unmuted? No, you're on. I'm good. You're on. You're on. You're on. You're on. <laughs> um, it is a 13 and a half inch um, throat here, five and a half inches deep. We're just trying to mute so we've got a few people. A There's people just a little there. bit of feedback happening. Unmuted themselves. And they need to please stop. Good. We'll keep going. Yes, yeah, so it is 13 and a half inches from needle to the um, edge of the throat and five and a half inches deep. You have about sort of 15 inches across on the left-hand side as well with the embroidery unit. And I can move this um, attaching arm down to the back. So because I'm going to be sewing today, I will just move that down out of the way. Sorry about the noise there. Oh. Click the um, I'm not to unmute. <laughs> so we've just got lots of background noise from other people. The content of M17 also has two um, screens. You've got a large 10.1 inch screen on the right hand side, and we also have a smaller screen up the top here, which has got all the key information for your stitches to allow you to adjust your length, width, tension, foot pressure, all of those key features. Okay, I'm going to take my needle plate off this machine, and it is so easy. I just lock my machine and press the button, and it will take my needle plate up for me. And I'll bring it over here. I'll we'll swap over to this camera and I'll put it in so we can show you these different needle plates. Out of the way. Okay, hopefully, um, Peter might zoom in a few little things. Yeah. I have got here, I'll zoom that one down, these three here. We'll start with, there we go, and I'll lift it up a little bit. So this is a standard needle plate. You will see it has the wide jelly bean sort of shape through the middle. So that allows for your full zigzag stitches on all your decorative stitches. How do I turn it around this way? Because that's how you guys look at it. <laughs> this is a nine millimeter plate. You've got your uh, little window here and it will always show you how to put your bobbin in. So if you ever forget how to put your bobbin in. There is a little diagram on the front. And it also, this is an easy set bobbin. So it has the little guide on here as well, which holds your thread and cuts it off for your bobbin thread. And I'll just show you, this is a nine, uh, seven millimeter needle plate. So it just means it's seven millimeters wide through there, but this one is also an easy set. You may have one that does not have the little light gray piece on it. And then we also have a five millimeter needle plate here too. So it doesn't matter which machine you have, the needle plates are all quite similar. And you will find on the needle plates different needle plate markings depending on 
what size, what type of needle plate you have. All of the machines will have your vertical and horizontal needle plates markings. So they've all got, sorry, the 9mm and the 7mm have got the horizontal and they've all got the vertical. So if you're wanting to sew with a uh, imperial seam, so you've got your half, quarter, one inch marked at the top, or if you want to do your metric, you've got your um, centimetres, sorry, millimetres here, 20, 30, 40 millimetres. If I go down to my 7 mil plate, you'll see that the markings are very similar. And even on your 5 mil plate, we do have um, imperial and metric down the bottom. So that allows you for very um, consistent seams. You will also notice on the little bobbin case plate that there is markings there as well, which are in front of your needle. So um, when I put some fabric on the machine, you'll be able to see then where it, you can line everything up. So these standard needle plates, and if we just zoom out, we'll start with this one here. This is a straight stitch needle plate. And this particular one is a nine mil and it's got three little holes in the middle. Yours may have two holes. It just depends on the age of your machine and the model you have. But it has all the same sort of markings on there for all your seam allowances. And then over on this side, we have two specialty needle plates. The HP needle plate, which is our professional needle plate, it has one left-hand side hole for your needle. And it is for um, two very special feet, which is the HP and the HP2 feet. Yes, they are here. So this is your HP. So this is your quarter, scant quarter inch piecing foot. Go and then your scant quarter inch walking foot as well, your dual feed. So those two feet work specifically with this, and that is a nine mil foot only for certain models. So please check with your local Janome store and they'll be able to tell you um, whether that one's available on your model. And this one here at the front is also a nine mil, and you'll see that it looks like it's a different sort of color. It's actually a Teflon um, plate and it comes with your little Teflon, your Ultra Glide foot. And that is specifically for all the bag makers out there that like sewing with your vinyls and your leathers and anything that's got that sort of stickiness to it, that this will allow you to get perfect seams and your materials won't get caught um, just in the texture. So if anyone who's ever tried to sew clear vinyl, um, you will know what I'm talking about, that it sort of seems to get stuck, that the Teflon um, needle plate and Ultra Glide foot will solve that issue for you. So I'm going to take my needle plate on my machine. Just a matter of dropping it in. If you've got um, a 5 mil or um, most of our, I think a 7 mil as well, they are all put on with a, where are we, over okay, here? Sorry. They are all on with um, a screw. So it's just a matter of tightening up your little screws that you've got with your screwdriver. So on here, um, actually I'll just grab this other one to show you. Excuse me. So on the needle plate, let's get it in exactly the that's right. as far as I can zoom that in. That's, we might have to zoom, zoom in on this I'll side. On this. this is a better zoom camera. <laughs> there you go. Let's zoom in here. There you go. So all of the markings on your needle plates are on the ones on the right hand side are for your centre needle position. And I'm just going to get this here so you can see these angled markings. Yep. Yeah. So you'll see that there's a straight line and a dotted line on these as the angles. They are for the different feet. So the straight line is for your A feet, so your standard centre needle position, and your dotted line is for your O foot, your quarter inch for your right hand needle position. And I'll show you what we use those angle markings for as well. 
So, so I just put my A foot. So this is my standard sewing foot. I'm just going to put that on there and I'm going to take some fabric. So if I'm doing a purchase dressmaking pattern, all of those seam allowances are generally 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. So it would just be a matter of me looking on my needle plate for that marking and I can then line up my fabric with that mark. And the mark is on the side of the foot and also on the little needle, um, sorry, the bobbin door. Got our cameraman just working here. So I just is a matter of lining that up with where I want to sew and then you can sew your seam. So this will then sew my one and a half inch, um, one and a half centimetre or five eighths an inch and for all commercial patterns sold in Australia, that's um, unless noted, that is what their um, seam allowances are. And then obviously you've got your garment. If I wanted to sew a seam, uh, um, a um, hem, and I've got that, say, pressed up like that, again, what you can do is once you've pressed that up and you would normally press it with the iron, I can line this up with a marking on the needle plate. And then when I sew, I get a nice straight seam. Now if I swap over to my O foot, for the quilt is out there. One of the things that a lot of people um, are not sure about is a Y seam. So I'm going to sew a Y seam here. It's a little baby's block. So if I put these blocks out, you'll see. That'll, oh, where's there the camera? <laughs> I just ignore okay. where the camera is. I hope it's, you know, on the right thing. So we've got our little, and this is what we call a Y seam. It's where three points, three seams come in together to one point. So what I've done already on the back of my fabric is I have marked a little dot on um, where the seam allowance is on all my little points, and that will make it easier because you want to um, start and stop at those little points. Depending on what machine you have, you can go into your sewing applications and set the length of your seams with your um, quilting stitch. Or if you don't have a machine with sewing applications, you can just choose your quarter inch um, stitch and sew with that one. And I've got my O foot and I've just selected on my machine a quarter inch stitch. So I'm going to put my start right at my needle. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up, my, the other camera might be better, show it on this side. Just back here a little bit. You can just see in front of my fabric there, okay. the little angled lines. So I'm lining up the edge, this edge of my um, fabric with the edge of my foot and I'm lining up the angled markings there. You can just see them with the edge of the fabric. And I know then that I'm perfectly at that point where I want to start sewing. So I'm gonna do a couple of stitches forward. I'm gonna hold in my reverse, do a couple of stitches back. And then we're gonna sew down and I'm going to stop at that little point and do a little back tap. If you have your quilt piece in sewing applications on your machine, this is where you would then program that length and it would be set in. And the next couple of steps would be automatic for you. But I'm going to sew this with my little markings, right sides together. Okay. And again, I'm going to place the fabric in under my foot, lining up the angle with the 60 degree angle there lining up this edge of the fabric with the edge of my foot. Matter of fact. Now, when you come down to this end, you want to stop right on that point again. You don't want your stitches to overlap. And then 
then we can do the last seam. So exactly the same, right sides together. Line everything up. Yes. And then when we open this up, so on the seams inside, where are we here? Yep. I like to um, take this then to the iron and I press it sort of around the center point, that sort of spirals, and that will give you just to focus. Sorry, that to me. There you I go. Just bumped that. Cameraman. So just press the seams all around in the same sort of direction. And then you've got your perfect points there. Looks good. You can do a similar effect, um, like with a Y seam, something that a lot of people like to do is I've got, say, my finished quilt here. And I want to put a border on and my border is striped. And this, I love doing this. I like, so normally if you're putting borders, so often you'll put, say, one border on like this and then you would put your second border like that. But with the striped fabrics, you then have the stripes going. You could choose to either put a cornerstone up in here or I love to do mitered corners. So I've got my corners out like this. So again, same as the Y seam, I've got a little point marked where I'm going to stop. And this one I can just sew straight down. I'm just using the edge of my foot to sew this, but I'm stopping right at that point. Hold that out of the way and I want to come in with my second side. So caution to the wind and not use a pin. I would normally pin that point. I'm living dangerously, yep. So I would normally pin this point. Don't sew over your pins, always take them out before you get to them. And I'm again sewing down to that little point that I had marked. If you do one stitch too many, the corner won't turn out. So now I've got this little piece here, so I need to sew these together. And I can use now, there is a 45 degree marking on here as well. Can you just point that one out again? It runs from here down okay. here. That's, it might be a bit hard to see, but just on the left-hand side of my needle plate, there's the 45. And because I'm on my O foot, I use the dotted line. So that way I can line that up exactly with that mark. And I know then I'm going to have a perfect um, placement. Up there. This is a quick finger press. Seems like this. I will generally press my seams open, the one that runs up in my border, and then I'll press my quilt seams out to my border. And then once you have that, you get then a beautiful mitered corner. Looks good. Mm, look at that. That was pretty good pattern matching there. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, little project that you would have got um, last month, I have to always think which month is which, is these little um, magnets that you can then um, make. They are foundation paper piece, and now I've put all my little pieces away for me. Out. If you want to make them, they are quite small. The little pattern pieces are only tiny, but they're really great for using all your little scraps up. 
We all have a box of scraps. Um, if you want to, you can with foundation paper piecing enlarge it. The only seam, um, the only seams that will be out of whack will be your final seam allowance on the side. But everything else for foundation piecing works. And it doesn't really matter which foot you use for this, but the project I've used my HP. It is my favourite foot of all times. So I'm going to swap over my HP needle plate. Now the machine knows which needle plate you've put on and it has automatically moved my needle over to my left-hand side. Change over my shank. Put my HP foot on. Now with a um, HP foot, the professional foot, it is a scant quarter inch, so it is a very skinny seam allowance. And a lot of American patterns will be written with a scant quarter inch. And it is just the um, distance from the edge of the fabric to where the stitches are that they only allow like a six millimeter sort of seam allowance there. Then there's like the width of the stitch that's sort of, you know, it doesn't seem like much. And then the curve of your fabric being pressed back. So that's why they say often you'll see in a pattern a scant quarter inch. So either you can move your needle position over if you're using an American pattern, which specifically calls for a scant quarter inch, or something like the HP foot where it sets it all up for you automatically. Um, now I've got some visual pieces of fabric here. There are multiple different ways to do foundation paper piecing and YouTube will be your best friend that will show you all different ways to do it. I do mine a particular way just because that's how I have worked out out of all the times of doing it. This is the way I like to do it. Um, I pre-fold all my papers. So I pre-fold everything so that all my seams are ready to go. And then I take my pieces of fabric and I will lay it on the back so that it covers. And it's good too because with I've pre-folded, I can see all my where my um, seams are. So I can lay my piece of fabric on there, lay my second piece of fabric, which is that one. And I personally like to use a back tack stitch and I only sew from point to point with my um, foundation piece. But as I said, there are multiple ways two stitches and I take my stitch length down to about a 1.6, 1.8. With this foot, I like it too that because it's got a skinny little, um, I don't know, the tongues, the tongues. tongues of the feet, I don't know, the little prongs of the foot that come out, it's really nice to be able to push that and I can see my whole um, stitch line that I'm sewing. And I like to stop at my point. And, um, oops, foundation paper piecing is um, a little bit like paper numbers. That you just work from number one, two, three, four, all the way up. So once I've stitched my seam, I don't worry about whether this is straight or not. I then take it over and will trim off my excess fabric. And you just, as I said, like paint by numbers, you just keep adding. And then I would keep it a press. You just keep adding your fabric. And now I'm going to add piece number three. Yeah, that's good. Yep. So I'm just going to add piece number three now. And you just stitch and you keep building this up. And I would trim that seam again, press it open, and you keep working up your piece till you get your little um, pattern that you've done. So here's one that I've stitched. Then that's the fun part of then sitting and picking out all the little papers. 
I generally sit with a bin at my TV, put on a nice show. There are other ways to do it without having to pull out the papers. Um, again, please, you know, try out all different ways until you find the one that like, that works for you. So once you've taken all your little papers out the back, you then trim these to size and then I have stitched them um, with a bit of wadding and I've just quilted some straight lines on these little ones that I've done and then I've glued a magnet piece on the back. And what I might do is I might get Peter to zoom out so I can show them the top I'll of this machine. So the Continental M17 comes with 850 stitches. So on the back panel here, we have just put all your stitch categories. It does have a manual, um, sorry, it does have a digital stitch chart as well. If I swap back over to my standard needle plate, I can show you. We have a stitch chart here. So all my stitches are on my screen and I can um, scroll through, pick the stitch I want and just select it and it's displayed on there. You also get these handy little magnet um, stitch charts that you can place up onto the back of your machine if you want to um, view more of your stitches. But I found out because I made these as little magnets for your fridge, I can now put them up here on my machine and decorate. And then we put our scissors up there and handy little section to put your tools. Um, I've got a little like magnet photo of my son at home on my fridge. I could now put that up on my machine. Hmm. So I thought that was a handy little thing that I found out about this machine that I can do. <laughs> okay. So uh, I don't know if you want to go back, go back over one. somewhere oh, over. One of the cameras there somewhere. You go. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us today for Genomi Club and we look forward to seeing you next month. And if you are at all interested in knowing which needle plates you can purchase for your model machine or you would like some more information on a new machine, please see your local Genomi stockist and they can help you out with all of that. Thank you very much.